Richard, The Nigel Farage Show. Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald. Well, a 20% year-on-year increase in violent crime across England and Wales, and it's culminated in the last six days in four more knife crime murders in London. Uh, and in response to this, London Mayor Sadiq Khan was out on the airwaves this morning. Uh, here he was this morning, telling us it could take up to a generation to solve this problem. Well, according to Glasgow, and when we've got the Violence Reduction Unit in Glasgow helping us, to really make significant progress can take up to uh, 10 years and a generation. Uh, why, do, why do they say that? The reason why they say that is because they saw in Scotland what we're seeing in London, which is children in primary school, in primary school, mm, thinking why? not only is it why? okay to carry a knife, but it gives them a sense of uh, uh, belonging, joining a criminal gang. It makes them feel safer. And they don't see anything wrong in, in getting involved in this sort of behaviour. So, uh, on the, at the one hand, we've got to be tough in relation to enforcement. And that's why we've got officers, part, as part of the Violent Crime Task Force, doing mm. intelligence led stop and searches, taking knives off our streets, offensive weapons off our streets, guns off our streets. So, knives in our primary schools. Well, somebody who was having none of this this morning was Piers Morgan on ITV's Good Morning Britain, and he was telling Sadiq Khan that he himself, as London Mayor, needs to take more responsibility. We, we can't wait 10 years for you to get your Absolutely. ducks in a row and stop these stabbings. We need more but, immediate action now. And the question is, what are you actually going to do? Actually going to do to stop this tidal wave of stabbings and stabbing deaths because it is out of control. You know it and we know it. Well, let me, so, so we've got fewer than 30,000 well, officers, exactly fewer than 30,000 officers working extremely hard. There may be a consolation to the victims of crime and I'm extremely sorry for any victim of crime. But even you have to accept in the last eight years we've lost more than 3,000 police officers from London. On top of that we've lost more than 3,000 community community support officers from London. On top of that, we've lost more than 5,000 police staff in London. On top of that, we've lost more than 35 police staff in London. None of this is your London. fault, is what you're saying, oh, right? Well, the point I'm making is, Piers, look... The point I, of, I, what I, you're doing is that you are passing the buck, what? as you always Quiet. do, Quiet. to Quiet. central government, right? You'll probably tell me in a minute it's Theresa May, because she cut police... We know all that. We know all well, that. What I'm asking what I'm explaining... you is, do you, do you personally, though, accept any responsibility for the fact that these numbers are going up and the number of stabbings is worsening. Do you accept that as London Mayor, it's happening on your watch and you are partly to blame? Or is it all everybody else's fault? I am the Mayor of London. The buck stops with me as far as London is concerned. But it's a duty for me to explain the circumstances around which our police are working incredibly hard. So the two things as the Mayor that are most important that I do is one, give our police the resources they need and two, give them my uh, support and my backing. Well, I have to say, I find Sadiq Khan's response to this pathetic. I think he is really passing the buck. He's copping out. Uh, there seems to be from him a sort of fatalistic acceptance that all of this is happening. It'll take a decade to solve. I won't still be in office when it comes. Well, here's one or two ideas. Why not bring back Stop and Search and stop being worried about being accused of victimising certain communities? Go to where knife crime's happening. Bring back Stop and Search. What about some tougher punishments? I mean, too often we hear of people who are caught carrying knives. They go to the magistrate's court what do they get? They get a warning and a fine of 150 quid. What about saying anybody on our streets carrying a knife will get a sentence? And to hear that we've got children in our primary schools carrying knives, well, here's an idea. Let's put a metal detector on every single school gate in this country. Then, Sadiq, you'll find that primary school kids don't have knives with them during the course of the day. I think there's a lot more we can do. I frankly find this attitude blasé. I think he is copping out. I think he is passing the buck. But please, tell me, do you think Sadiq Khan is right in saying it'll take a generation to solve this? Or like me, do you think it's a cop-out? And if you think, no, Sadiq is right, there are huge societal problems behind this that'll take forever to sort out, call 0345 6060 973. If you're with me and think he really ought to stand up and start getting tough, then text to 84850. And please, any solutions you've got to this problem, let me know by tweeting using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. Watch us on Facebook. I'm live 
from Birmingham, where I'll be doing a big TV show later on Brexit. Hi, Nigel. If more police were on the streets is the answer today, why is it not every day? Also, when I listen to LBC phone-ins, I hear from ex-police officers who appear to have the answers. Well, Jamie, uh, yeah, I think a lot of ex-police officers who've left the police force uh, frankly put their head in their hands with bewilderment about some of the things they're hearing today, such as the boasts that we saw from the Metropolitan Police a year ago, saying, we've got a 1,000 officers, and they're fighting hate crime. Well, I'll tell you where the real hate crime is. It's the 118 homicides that we've seen so, seen so far this year in our capital. I'm going to Paddington to speak to David. Good evening, David. Nigel, yes. Um, I'm not a massive fan of Piers Morgan, but I'm afraid he's now crucified Sadiq Khan as the mayor has, of London. He has, yes. Because... The guy did, just simply did not know what to say at all, had no answer, except to just repeat figures that he'd repeated three times already. And uh, he was reduced to a snivelling little wreck. And, 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 and you're the mayor, which is a leader of the city, of the greatest city in London, yep. uh, with, with, you know, with the largest economy in the world or whatever, as part of that country. You know, you cannot... Um, uh, not come up with at least some intelligent answer of your own, you know, as a leader. I'm sorry, he's got to go. It's ridiculous. It, it really was very is, weak, David, wasn't it? Very weak indeed. Do you know something? When the figure got to 100 murders, I discovered that the Mayor of London had not visited a single crime scene, had not spoken to a single bereaved family. I wonder what he thinks leadership is actually all about. No, quite right. No, that's right. He doesn't have a, an, an, an inkling. He, he's not a leader. He, sh he stood for the job on, on his ego. Uh, he won it, uh, and, and, and now he should realise he made a mistake. You know, let's, let's get real. Yep. And the other thing is, my own opinion, which is different to your own, probably, yep. is that the drug business should be all legalised. It's prohibition. And if you have prohibition, just as in Al Capone's times in the 30s, you're going to have gangs. And gangs are going to find the weapon, nearest weapon, in this case, knives. And I'm sorry that the amount of people dying is going to go up and up until we realise that they have to licence drugs, uh, treat those who get sick from them in the hospitals as they do with alcohol, and take the tax which is worth billions. David, would you... smell the coffee. David, I, com I completely understand that so much of this are people coming from communities where the educational levels are not what they should be, where the employment prospects are not what they should be, where family breakdown is very high. Uh, and yeah, the drugs uh, gangs are a huge part of this. But when you talk about, you know, selling drugs on licence, how far do you go? I mean, do you go as far as crack cocaine? Well, cocaine, uh, crack cocaine, you could possibly keep that as a, a, I don't know, there would still be an underground for something somewhere, mm. as there is with, you know, mm. absent, uh, super spent alcohol. It's, it's not going to go away completely. But that's a subsidy of, of, co of cocaine, which I think, you know, when you think it, there's two billion a year yep. in the hands every year of, of crooks with guns and gangs. Yeah, and no, so David, on. David, Take I... Take two billion away from them, and then what are they going to do? David... They've got I, nothing left to David, do. David, I, you know, I tell you what, you could convince me of this, but I... What I, and I keep asking this question, countries like Portugal, where they've changed the drug laws quite radically, countries like Switzerland, where they've tra changed the drug laws in a big, big way, I want to know, you know, a decade on, has crime really been reduced? And I would, David, I would love to see a, a genuine Royal Commission into this subject. Thank you. Darren is calling from Glasgow. Now, um, Darren, Sadiq Khan was referring to problems in Glasgow earlier. You're a new caller. Welcome to the show. Hiya. Uh, well, in regards to Sadiq's comments about Glasgow, yeah. having lived in Glasgow all my life, it did work. It was a long-term plan, but it has worked. Um, when I was growing up, when I was younger in Glasgow, you couldn't walk out of your local scheme without the fear of getting stabbed. Nowadays, that problem's gone. So, yeah, it has a long-term plan. But Sadiq's right. It, it has the right plan. But so, you're saying about him trying to pass the buck. Yeah, I don't think he is passing the buck. I mean, the buck ultimately does land with the Tories. You're saying the solution is maybe bring back stop and search. Where, where's the police to do that? The police have been taken off the streets, their budgets have been well, cut. Well, that's going to do well, the stop and search? Well, 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 Darren, there is the issue, firstly, of numbers of police, and you're quite right. You know, there's been a 20% reduction in police in England and Wales since 2010. That is a fact, absolutely. It's a problem. But the other issue, of course, is how police are directed. Darren, tell me, is there one thing that you can think of in Glasgow that did reduce the incidence of knife crime? 
Education. Just education. No, you asked me for one example. No, 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 fine. No, 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 fine. No, no. Listen, I don't doubt that. What about my idea? You know, when I hear the the Mayor of London telling me that there are children going into primary school with knives, what about metal detectors on the school gates? Who's going to pay for the metal detectors, Nigel? I don't think they're going to be terribly expensive. But, yeah, sure, they'll cost money, but they wouldn't be terribly expensive. Uh, Maybe that would be a good preventative. I don't know. I'm interested, Darren. The fact that it has worked to some degree in Scotland is a good thing, uh, and you can deal with causal problems. But equally, isn't it right to say... I mean, for example, on Twitter, Paul says to me, 10 years for carrying a knife would soon stop it. I'm not sure it would stop all of it. But don't we need some punishment as well, Darren? But then, we're, we're, well, for starters, our prison systems are already busting at the seams. Where are we going to put all these people? Well, we might have to build then, some... Again, I mean, we're getting back to the metal detectors as well. They're saying they're not going to cost much. You're talking about every school in England and Wales. We're at the, 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 the times now where teachers are buying kids food. Yeah. No, D- Darren, I'm, I, you know, I'm not saying this comes cost-free, and I'm saying when things come out of the public purse, you have to prioritise. But, you know, frankly, with a thousand thought police crime officers in london i think maybe some reprioritization darren thank you and some good news from darren saying things have got better and hey look at new york my friend rudy giuliani radically transformed crime in new york with a very targeted approach to policing and they got tough on offenders too please don't tell me there's nothing we can do i i thought the mayor today frankly sounded pretty blasé about all of this it'll take a decade i think we need a much greater sense of urgency and i suspect that's the majority view you're listening to the nigel farish show here on lbc it is now 6 15 and time for the news headlines with lisa Aziz. scotland yards investigating a video of a cardboard effigy of grenfell tower being burned at a bonfire party a man who admitted murdering his wife and her daughter at their home in gloucester has been sentenced to life with a minimum of 29 years in prison a 40 year old man from South London's been charged with terrorism offences. LBC weather showers continuing in Scotland and Northern Ireland tonight, although England and Wales should stay dry, a low of 7 degrees. LBC Travel, I'm J. Louise Knight and in the centre of town, Whitehall is shut both ways for a police investigation. It's closed from Trafalgar Square to Parliament Square. That's causing long delays on all surrounding routes, looking very, very heavy westbound on Victoria embankments as well now. In East Finchley, an accident on the A1s causing westbound queues towards Henley's Corner at the North Circular and a burst water main in Earls Court has shut Old Brompton Road going westbound at Fimber Road. That's slowing things down in the area. Now, if you're heading south on the M3, it's slow towards 3 at Light water and bag shot a car broke down just before the junction it has been cleared so all lanes have reopened again and on the trains there are delays on southeastern at bromley south after someone was walking near the track this is lbc sometimes you wish you could just magic things better like that time you tried to paint your walls a sparkly shade of unicorn but you don't need to be a magician to fix things because trust a trader are always on hand to help TrustedTrader.com have lots of really lovely tradespeople who are vetted, reviewed and reliable. So for decorators, plasterers or other professionals in their trade, just pop online, make your wish and they appear like magic. Did you know that the elevators in the Shanghai Tower are the world's fastest? Or that Bruce Lee won the 1958 Hong Kong Cha Cha Championship? And that you'll find more bicycles in Beijing than in Amsterdam. But here's the most amazing thing to know. With Lufthansa's attractive fares, you can fly to Asia from £389. Book by November 18th for travel starting from November 15th. Contact your travel agent or visit lufthansa.com. Conditions apply. Say yes to the world. Lufthansa. Make Christmas a little special with a pouch of celebrations just two ninety nine, a tub of Nestle Quality Street for three ninety nine, individually wrapped chocolates ideal for sharing. Hmm. Or not. Lidl. Big on quality, little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores exclude Zenai. For hundreds of years, Indian food has been about sharing great food with the people yeah. you love. For over five years, Manjal Restaurant have brought North and South India together in the heart of London. And due to its success, now we've come to Chigwell Loughton. Experience the essence of India and make memories with Manjal. Book now at manjalrestaurant.com. Whatever business demands, we deliver. 
When you need your staff connected, we deliver the new Transit Custom with voice control technology on the optional SYNC 3 system. When you want a better deal, we deliver a £500 customer saving when you buy a new Ford commercial vehicle after taking a test drive. Only at the Transit Show live event, 3rd to the 18th of November, at your nearest participating Ford dealer. Ford. Together, we go further. Selected models only. Customer saving excluding 20% VAT of the recommended retail price. Contract from 3rd to 19th of November. Registered by 31st of March 2019. T's and C's apply. See forward.co.uk forward slash transit show live. Your business has come this far, but now's your time to soar into the skies of spectacular with a fast, affordable Funding Circle business loan. With decisions in as little as 24 hours and a dedicated account manager, there's no waiting around. So join the thousands of businesses who have taken out a Funding Circle loan and help your business fly. Apply today at FundingCircle.com. Authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority, T's and C's apply. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Call 0345 6060 When Sadiq Khan says it could take up to 10 years to solve or begin to solve the knife crime problem in London, I'm asking you, is that a fair and reasonable comment or is it a cop-out? And look, I'm not blaming him for all of this. When he became mayor of London, we already had a problem, but it has exploded over the course of the last year or two and I just don't think he's talking about this with enough sense of urgency. I think there are things that can be done and just to blame police cuts on its own simply isn't enough. Russ from Croydon says, all day long on LBC News we're being told there are hundreds of extra police on the streets today. If that's true, where have they come from? Where do they normally hide? Russ, it's about reprioritisation and I suspect in many cases there'll be police who've had to work over time, lost holiday, etc. because we've had four murders in London with knives in the course of the last six days. I'm going to Peckham to speak to Kofi, who's a new caller to the show. Good evening, Kofi. Good evening, Nigel. How are you? I am well. Welcome. But I just, Kofi, and maybe, you know, tell me I'm wrong, but I just don't think that the mayor has enough sense of urgency about this. Well, um, Nigel, I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you this time. All right. I think um, you, you have a point with regards to uh, the, the response that he came up with when he was obviously talking to um, the, 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 uh, the video that you played or the audio that you played. Yeah. However, I just do think that the whole thing that we're talking about, we're missing the point. We should really, really I think the problem is parents. It's mm-hmm. parents with good young kids. 15-year-old, 14-year-old dying on the street. Uh, you know, wh- where are their parents? What is, what is your child out at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock? You don't know where your child is doing. It just doesn't make sense to me. Well, Kofi, when you've got a 15-, 16-year-old, yeah. uh, you know, getting them back in before 9 p.m. is not that easy, is it? Well, it's, it's, it's not. You know, if, if you've got a child and one day is not something that he, that he always does, you know where the child is. You know where the child is. Actually, really, do you know your child's friends? You, you know. Well, I mean, it, it cannot be possible. You know, if your child go to school, 15-year-old, you go to school. Why, why are yep. you out at 8 o'clock? What are you doing? Yeah, no, Kofi, look, you make a fair point. But can, can I just say this, though? that, you know, there are parts of London in which family breakdown figures are very, very high. You might find their one-parent families. You might find that parent uh, is working kind of round the clock just to keep a roof over their heads. You know, not not all children come from homes where there are two parents. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I appreciate that. Also, can I just say, it's not going to be that large number of people that are going to come from that broken home to be actually a victim of this nice crime. And also, when you're, when you're talking about the police, what are police really going to do about this? Seriously. Well, you, well, well, OK, Kofi, let me say this. They should be stopping and searching. They shouldn't be frightened of doing it for fear of being called racist or whatever else it may be. They should, in areas where knife crime is prevalent, be stopping and searching. But it's not city can that makes the law about actually you can stop and search. This, the law is there. Why, why are we blaming him? Why are we blaming him? Um, well, we're not blaming him for ev- We're not blaming him for this. I think what we're saying is he doesn't appear to be taking this seriously enough. He is, he is not advocating as mayor tough measures to deal with it. That's my criticism, Kofi. Well, I think he's very, he's doing a very, very difficult job. And when he does say that, actually, his hands are very tight, 
it, it has a very tight because of the fact that actually we're facing a lot of conserv- conserv- conservatives. They they just basically uh, making it very, very difficult for them. Well, for I have to them. say, Kofi, I listened this morning to Home Office Minister Victoria Atkins on combating violent crime, and frankly, she was no better than Sadiq Khan. So I'm not just blaming, this is not purely party political, it's about attitude. Kofi, thank you for making the point about parents. Aaron is a new caller from South End. Good evening to you. Good evening, you're on. Yeah, I'm all right. I just, I want to see a bit more, I want to see a bit of action. <laughs> well, basically, my, my viewpoint on the situation is, I, I do agree with what you're saying. Um, the knife crime and the sort of lifestyle that leads to it has become such the norm in that sort of area that it, it's become almost like a culture. Um, I mean, yes. if you listen, listen to any of the new sort of rap music, grime music, uh, just drill music, all through all these lyrics, it's t- constantly talking about selling drugs and stabbing people. So when they've got role models like these rappers running around, mm. it's no wonder why they seem to think this is the acceptable way to behave and man- like, help themselves. So how do we tell them, Aaron, that it's not acceptable? I think, obviously, some more like positive role models in that sort of genre and uh, sort of areas would help a lot. I think it's, it's a case of you look up to the people you respect and some of these people that are running around talking about the non- guns, knives and drugs, it's, it, it's not the sort of viewpoints they need to be no. I, taking I mean, in. I mean, Aaron, you know, where Sadiq Khan is right and where you're right is there is a cultural problem here, as you say, through music, etc., almost a sort of glorification of all of this. But that doesn't mean that you can't get tough on the offenders. doesn't mean you can't scare them a bit. I mean, I want people to be scared of walking down the street carrying a knife. Uh, and, and, and at the moment, we are just not doing that. But no, your point about some of that music and its lyrics is a very, very good one indeed. Where are the parents, I get on Twitter, perhaps prosecuting them when they're under 18 is found with a knife? Responsibility back to parenting. Sharon, a lot of people would agree with that, but I did make the case uh, that there are a lot of families in which there isn't a parent present, and, and, and that is a real problem here. Frederick is a new caller from Canning Town. Good evening, Frederick, and welcome. Hi, how are you? I am okay, but I want to see some action, Frederick. I know, look, I, I think it's ridiculous. There's so much wider issues that are at stake here. And I think the disease at the heart of British politics, as well as society, comes from this foreign interference. I can't understand how we're not up in arms about Russian interference with the Brexit vote about, uh, uh, you know, all, well, well, all the stuff that's, that, that's maybe going because they, on with the right wing. They're, they're, maybe they're, because they can't find any. Fre- Frederick, maybe because they can't find any. But back to the, back to the issue, back to the issue of knife crime. When the Mayor of London says it'll take a decade to solve, is that the right approach or is it, frankly, a cop-out? It, well, it's been there. It, it, it's, it's in line with the hip hop music, but we've got wider issues and Russian interference. I can't understand. I don't buy that at all, Frederick. I'm moving on. I haven't got time. Sam is a new caller from Romford. Hi, Sam. Good evening. Hi, Nigel. Um, now, you came up with a list of things that should be being done to. Suggestions, um, yes. Yeah. None of which are within Sadiq Khan's power. He can't increase sentences. Well, we've got a Prime Minister who's opposed to stop and search, so how can he bring that well, I, into well, London? I, well, I tell you what he can do. I tell you what he can do. He can lead the debate on these things. He is the Mayor of London. He said himself in that interview that the buck stops with him. He can be an advocate for changes that are needed, uh, and he can encourage schools in London to put metal detectors in. I would have to work out what that's going to cost, but it's not going to be a fortune. Uh, and he can argue. You know, and he meets the Metropolitan Police all the time. He could argue for a reprioritisation. It seems that both the Tory government and Sadiq Khan are running away from the concept of stop and search. So, actually, in terms of influencing the debate, I think he's in a very powerful position. But uh, I suppose with with stop and search, my, my nan ran a wig shop in Brixton during the riots, and. And, you know, it, it risks alienating the whole generation. I'm not going to get searched as a as a 30-year-old white man walking through an area wearing a suit um, on my way to the East India Club to have a cigarette with you. I am... Uh, I'm afraid they've banned smoking inside private clubs as well. But anyway, go well, on. <laughs> but we've had a couple on the square, Nigel. OK, um, fine. All right. But, um, but, you know, I'm not going to get stopped. 
it is going to be young black men who are getting stalked. And that is going to alienate them even more than they already feel. And and I, I work in mental health. I, I, I've met a lot of young black men who feel very alienated by the way that they are treated by the police, especially when they've also got a, a mental health record. If you add on the sort of encouragement of the police to to stop young black men as they're walking around the street, you're going to end up with with a hugely disengaged generation. Well, maybe, maybe we've got a disengaged generation already. I mean, when I, I mean, Sam, when I hear the mayor saying that it's now becoming commonplace for kids at primary schools to carry knives, something says to me we can stop that. I, I, I do agree, but are we going to stop and search primary school children? Absolutely, if we have to, why not? Why not? Walking with their mum on the way to school? Well, well, actually, no problem there, because my metal detector at the gates will get them, won't it? I, I, I just think, you know, that, that what a terrifying experience. I, I, I've got a young son. I, what a terrifying well, I, experience well, that would be what. for him if he was stopped by the police. And, walking and yeah, through. Scary. But, but walking scary, through. The idea that there might be knives in the <laughs> walking, through well. a, walking through a metal detector into school doesn't strike me as being too terrifying. Look, you know, Sam, you can tell me, my suggestions don't work, but at least I've made some. I've put some on the table. I get that stop and search leads to some community criticism. I understand that. But at the moment, it appears to me we are doing very, very little. I'm not satisfied. And no doubt I'll see you again in St. James's Square at some point. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show exclusive in LBC. It's now 6.30 in time for the news with Lisa Aziz. Scotland Yard's investigating a video of a cardboard effigy of Grenfell Tower being burned at a bonfire party. It's been widely circulated online. Theresa May's called it utterly unacceptable. A man's been jailed for murdering his wife and 11-year-old stepdaughter at their family home in Gloucester. Christopher Boone stabbed them repeatedly last May. He'll serve a minimum of 29 years. Two teenagers have now been arrested after a 17-year-old was stabbed to death outside a tube station in South London on Friday. Scotland Yard says hundreds more officers are out on the capital's streets after four murders in five days. LBC weather showers continuing in Scotland and Northern Ireland tonight, although England and Wales should remain dry, a low of seven degrees. Nick Ferrari at breakfast, LBC. man was stabbed in broad daylight in Bromley in south-east London. We turn to Metropolitan Police Commander Stuart Cundy. It's two months ago today that the Commissioner said we are now seeing a plateau. Was she ill-advised to use that expression, Commander? I don't think she was ill-advised, no. So we saw earlier on this year significant increases in the levels of violence in London. Do all my listeners to believe that when, of course, we're talking about the events we're talking about. Nick Ferrari at breakfast, weekday mornings from 7, LBC. And finally, an epidemic continues to sweep the nation. Thousands of people have been struck by FOMOB, the fear of missing out on business. We go live now to a badly affected area. It started with a feeling of butterflies every time I thought about missing a client's call. Now I've got four phones taped to my face. If you're afraid of missing an important call from a client, you could be at risk of FOMOB. But never fear, e-receptionist answers and diverts your calls, so you never miss an important opportunity. Go to ereceptionist.co.uk and fight the FOMOB with e-receptionist. A good summer, finally. When your kids go to bed, oh, finally. Making a profit, finally. A business bank doing something different, finally. Like giving cash back on your business account. Introducing the new Santander 123 Business Current Account. Finally, a proper reason to switch. Cash back up to £300 annually on credit turnover. Monthly fee £12.50. For UK-based companies with up to two directors, owners or partners. 18 plus T's and C's apply. I can't pretend to be a great celebrity. Whatever the size of your business, now you can take card payments square and fair. Get next business day payments as standard with no monthly fees and free point-of-sale software. Learn more at square.com slash fair. Authorised by the Financial Conduct Authority for the Provision of Payment Services. Terms and fees at square.com slash fair. That works the thing on me, Bob. Shall we upload a photo of us with a flamingo? No. What about a photo of the stolen ear desert the beach? No, no, no. We have to share one of us next to this beautiful lagoon. Stop it. Give me that phone. 
There are many ways to keep the Algarve and its hidden gems your little secret. But only one way to fly. Fly British Airways from Gatwick to Faro from £159 per person for return flights and seven nights accommodation. Availability and dates are extremely limited. At all protected, conditions and booking fee may apply. For full details, cba.com slash Gatwick. Okay, you babes of jazz, let's pick up the pace. Let's shake the blues away. Let's keep it hot. Paint the town with a night of thrills, dance, razzle-dazzle, and all that jazz. Chicago the Musical at the Phoenix Theater. Final weeks to see Chicago the Musical at the Phoenix Theater. Ah, the great British roast. Where mobiles are set aside, the TV goes off, the family comes together, and everything stops. For the perfect roast, only Bisto Best Gravy will do. Made with real meat juices for that authentic, rich roasted flavour. <laughs> ah, Bisto. This is LBC, The Nigel Farage Show. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. Sadiq Khan tells us it's going to take 10 years to sort out the knife crime problem in London. That after four murders in the course of the last six days. And I just don't think it's good enough. I think he's copping out. I think we've got to get tough metal detectors in schools, bringing back stop and search and real penalties for people who are caught with knives. That may not solve all of the social problems that are leading to this, but goodness me, might just make our streets a bit safer in the short term. Before I get back to your calls on that, uh, the British Army, Air Force, and Navy have a massive recruitment problem. It's the biggest they've had for a long, long time. People simply aren't joining. I'm not surprised by that. Uh, they've been run down ever since 2010, particularly. Uh, and it's difficult to say to people, join a service uh, that keeps on contracting. But we do allow people who aren't British to join the British Army, normally after they've lived in this country for five years. And we make the odd exception for people from the Commonwealth. Well, the plan now is to expand that and maybe to recruit as many as 1,350 people for the armed forces from Commonwealth countries, people who've never lived in Britain and perhaps have never even visited Britain. Is this a good idea? Well, I'll tell you what, as we approach this Sunday, the 100th anniversary of the armistice, it's perhaps worth remembering that in those two world wars, 40% of the contribution made by British forces in both of those wars came from what are now called Commonwealth countries. In those days, they were the empire. It was an incredible contribution. Not one of them uh, was pressed into doing it. They were all volunteers. And one of my thoughts and my views on our country going forward, particularly with Brexit, is that we can be a lot closer to the Commonwealth, countries with whom we've got a shared history and, and shared values, and I have no problem at all with these people joining the armed forces, even if they've never lived in our country. Now, back to, back to rising knife crime, violent crime, up 20%. In the course of one year and phil from birkenhead by tech says mrs may was the longest serving home secretary in modern times she was useless she must take some of the blame and i think phil that actually is a very fair point jackie from watford wants to get even tougher from me she says bring in the army they haven't got much on at the moment we should utilize them more that would frighten the life out of the thugs well jackie i guess that's all about rules of engagement what would you actually want the army to do i'm all in favor of bringing the army in if there is a huge you know i mean let's say mass rioting started in the streets i can see the argument then for bringing in the army uh, i'm not quite sure we're ready for that yet despite how bad things are. Nigel, we shouldn't be having this conversation as the government should be sorting out this violence. They are there to govern. Do they know what that means? Obviously not. Cathy, as I've said twice now, uh, you know, this is not just Sadiq Khan and the Labour Party. I think the Tory party have been equally weak and bad on this. Jonathan from Reading is a new caller to the show. Welcome, Jonathan. 
Hi, Nigel. As as usual, even on whatever the subject, I find myself agreeing with you. So, uh, right. well done there. Um, I, I've been a police officer for 20 years. And, right. Uh, I joined the year that Labour came to power. And I, I'm just going to split my point in two. I'll be as quick as I can. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, first, first of all, um, when I joined, we had a fairly new headquarters with its own residential block, all these nice bedrooms. And the effect of the Labour government was all of a sudden, day, well, month by month, a bedroom would disappear and a little department would pop up and officers were taken from the streets and were put into the stolen milk department and the stolen cat with two tails department <laughs> and then the department which which measured the figures for how many bottles of milk had been stolen. And so from from my view, when, when Sadiq Khan talks about police cuts, a lot of the cl- cuts that I've seen uh, are in the, the, for those bureaucrats that none of us knew what they did. And in some cases, they didn't know what they did. You, know, you sat with them in the canteen and they, weren't, they couldn't give you an explanation as right. to what so, they did. So this is about growth of bureaucracy and, and actually misplacing our police resources, yeah? Misplacing the resources. But the other thing that we need to have is we need to know that we're supported from above. Now, I certainly would wouldn't feel supported by Sadiq Khan for one minute. But the, the problem you've got now is that, as I say, things have changed a lot in my 20 years. I make myself sound very, very old, but I'm a fourth generation police officer and my yeah. great grandfather would be turning in his grave because yeah, ultimately you have to look. We, we are intelligence led, whatever we do. And the, the guy says about the 30 year old white man in a suit wouldn't be stopped and searched. And no, he wouldn't, because he, he isn't somebody who statistically is involved in these crimes. And, and as uncomfortable as it may be, um, if you look at the statistics, unfortunately, they do fill, fill a, a very specific demographic. Well, Jonathan, now, le- Jonathan, let's be frank about this. Most of this crime is black on black, isn't it? It, it is indeed. But the problem that we have is you, you try and stop and speak to, to one of these users, the vast majority, and all of a sudden they, they come from nowhere, every one of them's got a smartphone filming it, you're racist scum, you're this, that and the other. And I, and I think about my grandfather, you know, when he was policing, he'd have just swiped his cape down, taken their feet from underneath them, and in one, in one move, and, and for us to take these people on, we are going to, you know, and to try and deal with this, we will get complaints, we will get yeah, videos posted on well, isn't that Jonathan? Media, and we need support. Isn't that Jonathan why you know, both Conservative and Labour parties are terrified of stop and search. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they, 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 they're, they're afraid of the bad publicity. And yet, isn't, very simple and yet isn't the truth of it, Jonathan, that far from being racist, putting in place stop and search and tough measures would save black lives? Exactly. Yeah, exactly, it would. And, we, you know, we used to, we used to have a, a big thing called Operation Cordless, where, 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 do you remember where the, the phone boxes used to get doxyacetylene torched and they used to steal the cash boxes out of them? Oh, and yeah. we had a very specific um, uh, ethnic group who were committing those crimes and we used to go out and if we saw them, we stopped them because they were the people that we would expect that, that there was a chance of finding those things in the back of their car. Yeah. And this is the thing now, is that they, they, they're completely uh, afraid of any bad, bad publicity to deal with that. And, um, you know, our, our hands are tied. And Satik Khan, I cringe every time I hear this, this number of people lost, this number of people lost. Mm. Well, hang on mm. a minute, you know, mm. and in fairness to community support officers, there's a very simple rule that, you know, People who are law-abiding will like the police. Criminals will dislike the police. And you can do all these interventions. You can have community support officers holding coffee mornings and doing all this sort of stuff. You won't change that fact that people have, uh, who are prepared to commit crime will not like the police. No, but, no I mean, I, much but, I, but I guess what community support can do is get better intelligence from within communities. But, hey, Jonathan, thanks for the call and particularly the insight into the growth of bureaucracy within the police force. Now, some out there coming up with much tougher solutions than me. Henry says, young men carrying knives should be put straight into national service. Mary says, national service to get the gangs off the street. They wouldn't know what had hit them. Gosh, I'd be very fascinated to see um, a political party supporting bringing back national service. That would be interesting. I'm off to Waltham Forest to speak to Sophie, another new caller to the show. Good evening, Sophie. Good evening, Nigel. Um, thank you very much for taking my call. Um, I've heard what the previous callers have said, but yes. fundamentally, I think that these tough measures are treating the symptom and not the root cause. Sophie, I mean, Sophie, saying- Sophie, I agree with that. I understand that. I, I, I'm not suggesting that the tough measures that I'm proposing solve all of this problem, but I am saying 
it might make the streets a bit safer in the short term, all right? It might make the streets a bit safer in the short term, but until we tackle the root cause, this will just be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay. These lung, these, this black-on-black black crime is, is disproportionately affecting the black community. It is yep. black people typically um, stabbing and, and killing other black people. These yep. are typically affecting you know, young males, predominantly from low-income families, single-parent families, where there might be one mother with, with you know, two, three, four, children working all the hours and doesn't have tabs on the child now i appreciate that a parent should have control of what their child is doing but also we need to have things like after school clubs for children so that they're not you know looking for things to fill their time and going going into crime and other issues we, we need to be filling their time allowing them to take on a hobby take on a new skill Governments need to be working with local communities to understand how they perceive the root cause. Uh, you know, in South London in particular, there are huge amounts of stabbings. And this is because there's not enough for young people to do. We also need to be introducing these young children with role models. I mean, I personally work with a great London-based charity. I won't name them. But they are doing fantastic work by targeting primary school children and intervening early pairing them up with role models, allowing those children to aspire beyond what they see immediately in front of them, not going into gang crime, not being seduced by the free pair of trainers, and that's what gang leaders do. They but Sophie, you make, do- I mean, you make the point about the community in which it's happening, family breakdown, they're all things, Sophie, that I've acknowledged since we went on air earlier on this evening. But if I, live, if I was a young man living in South London and say I wanted to play sport, I mean, there's no shortage of facilities, is there? Yeah, but they're not all free. And we have to no, recognise that no, these low-income that. families cannot afford the privilege of paying for their children to have tutor-led or instructor-led sports activities. Do you think like our schools education? are doing enough? No. I mean, it seems to me that, uh, and I'm talking more, I mean, yeah, we're talking young males here, aren't we? Because yeah. I've always had the view that if young males like football or cricket or basketball or whatever it is, um, and they become part of a team, they're probably a bit less likely to get into trouble. And that's where the schools could play a huge role here, isn't it? It is, but the schools need funding. The schools need funding to be able to run after-school clubs, to be able to give free lessons to students, and to really be targeting and, and these activities. And an element, of, an element of culture too, Sophie. Yeah. Agreed. You know, I mean, a lot of people I've spoken to in teaching say the conditions inside London schools are so awful, they can't wait for the bell to go and leave the premises. But I think fundamentally the government needs to be doing more, and the solution is... All right, okay. So, Sophie, I don't... Listen, Sophie, I don't take issue with what you're saying. I do think there are longer-term things we need to do. I'm not pretending this is easy, uh, but when I'm saying get tough on it, I stand by what I say. I think we can make the streets safer. Primary school kids carrying knives... No, Mr. Mayor, we can stop that. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It's now 6.45 and time for the news headlines with Lisa Aziz. Scotland Yard's investigating a video of a cardboard effigy of Grenfell Tower being burned at a bonfire party. The Prime Minister's called it utterly unacceptable. A man who admitted murdering his wife and her daughter at their home in Gloucester has been sentenced to life with a minimum of 29 years in prison. A 40-year-old man from South London's been charged over a suspected terror plot. LBC weather, showers continuing in Scotland and Northern Ireland tonight, although England and Wales should stay dry, a low of 7 degrees. LBC Travel, I'm Jay Louise Knight. In the centre of town, Whitehall has completely reopened, as has Parliament Square. There are still huge delays, though, on all surrounding routes. It's after a police investigation, which has finished. If you're coming into town on the A40, expect delays towards Long Lane at Hillingdon, an accident blocking the exit slip road. And it's queuing out of town on the A12 towards Newbury Park because of temporary lights on Horns Road. Now, to the west of town, Earls Call told Brompton Road is shut westbound at Fimber Road. That's for the ongoing repair to a burst water main and on the train someone's walking near the tracks at Bromley South it's causing delays on South Eastern Coming up at 7 on LBC Ian Dale We'll be previewing the US midterms and I want to know if you can identify as a different race to the one you're born into but the big news of the day the Spice Girls are reuniting Zika Zika Ian Dale on LBC with hands-free keycard and 16-inch alloy wheels as standard, the Renault Clio is guaranteed to turn more than a few heads this season. Get the autumn look. From as little as £179 deposit and £179 a month with 0% APR finance. 
Get your quote today. Search Clio Offer. Renault Finance, 48 months, optional final payment, £4,221, subject to status, over 18s, order by 7th of January, register by 31st of March 2019, retail customers, participating dealers, T's and C's apply. Ah, the great British roast, where mobiles are set aside, the TV goes off, the family comes together, and everything stops. For the perfect roast, only Bisto Best Gravy will do, made with real meat juices for that authentic, rich roasted flavour. (laughs) Ah, Bisto. Your business has come this far, but now's your time to soar into the skies of spectacular with a fast, affordable Funding Circle business loan. With decisions in as little as 24 hours and a dedicated account manager, there's no waiting around. So join the thousands of businesses who have taken out a Funding Circle loan and help your business fly. Apply today at FundingCircle.com. Authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority, T's and C's apply. And finally, an epidemic continues to sweep the nation. Thousands of people have been struck by FOMOB, the fear of missing out on business. We go live now to a badly affected area. It started with a feeling of butterflies every time I thought about missing a client's call. Now I've got four phones taped to my face. If you're afraid of missing an important call from a client, you could be at risk of FOMOB. But never fear, eReceptionist answers and diverts your calls, so you never miss an important opportunity. Go to ereceptionist.co.uk and fight the FOMOB with eReceptionist. We're all born 4x4, adventurous, curious, unstoppable. And now every Jeep Renegade and Compass has even more reasons to stay that way. Five years warranty, three years servicing, five years roadside assistance and... And 0% APR. Search Jeep 535 to discover more. Jeep, born to be wild. T's and C's apply. Five years or 75,000 miles warranty. Available on Jeep Renegade and Compass. Minimum 30% customer deposit. 36 month term. HP sales until 31 12 18. Subject to status. Jeep Financial Services. I'm Peter Jones, and I've been using Sage to help me manage my businesses since I was 19. Now, Sage Business Cloud helps me manage everything from money to people. Sage technology and support means making tax digital is really simple. So, when people ask me, what's the secret of your success? I say it's about making wise choices. It's about being Sage. Start making tax digital today and get 50% off Sage Business Cloud for the first three months at sage.com slash mtd. Conditions apply. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Gang culture seems to be a huge part of this knife crime problem. Uh, For example, I get here. Children have been neglected for years by government. Uh, Divorced families are up. Unmarried motherhood is up. Uh, This leaves children isolated and drawn to gang culture where life is cheap. It's not Khan's fault. I'm not suggesting that all of this is Khan's fault. I am suggesting uh, that he appears almost blasé in his response to the rise in knife crime in London, I think people want to see a bit more leadership and a bit more action. That is my view. I'm off to Watford to speak to Tony, a new caller to the show. Good evening, Tony. Good evening, Nigel. How are you? OK, so what do you think? I mean, you know, is he just copping out on this? A little bit, yeah. I mean, as a survey Met Police officer who's not long finished one of my own shifts... Um, oh, wow. I... I can categorically say that stop and search has never gone away, despite what the public think. All right. um, if it's done lawfully and within reason, um, as a police officer, you can do you can do your job and not worry about it. However, in terms of being supported by management and by the mayor, that's another matter. The real issue lies in when I arrest someone for having what we call a zombie knife or a machete on them, and mm-hmm. I put them in front of the magistrate's court with all the evidence collected. Yeah, what happens? It's, a warning. Um, a warning. Yeah, and and that's that's the big issue. It, you know, yeah. it's like with yeah. children. Yeah. Yeah. If they, yeah. if, you know, with actions come the consequences. If people know the, the, the people that I deal with every day know that they're going to get a slap on the wrist or this or that, which then comes on to wider issues of funding and less of us on the street, um, and then to prisons, and then it's just one big circle of I don't know. It just it's just wrong. Everything's in terms of so Tony point you were making and i said it but i said at the top of the hour that what generally happens is uh, someone goes to a magistrate's court they get a 150 quid fine and a warning does that happen in nearly every case in your experience 
I can't say every case, but no. in a lot of cases that I follow up on, then so yes, do you, it does. So, so do you as a police officer then wonder why you bothered? Yes. And mm. I, you do get you, get you do get disillusioned with how you you know how the public perceives you, how we're spoken about. I can categorically say, for me and every other police officer in this country, that we go out every day with best intentions to do what we can. There is yes. nothing I like more than arresting an offender, be it for an assault or for carrying a knife or for having drugs on them. But it's frustrating when you when you check up on the case and you look at it in the, and see what's the CPS yeah. and, and nothing happens. It's, it's very frustrating, but we do do absolutely everything we can despite perception and with all the cuts and everything else i know i could talk for hours on it <laughs> oh no i'm sure you could and you're very passionate about it and i'm very pleased that you are tell me something um do you think that tougher sentences would act as a deterrent 100 percent. okay all right tony great call thank you for calling us and hey Folks, we've got people like Tony out there, you know, taking some pretty big risks, dealing with people carrying, as he said, zombie knives and machetes. He does his job, gets them to the magistrate's court, and virtually nothing happens. It's crackers. We need to be tougher. I really do believe this, and that call makes me think it even more than I was at the start of this show this evening. I'm off to Rislip to speak to Richard, another new caller to the show. Welcome, Richard. Hi, Nigel. So, Hi. what's to be done? Honestly, I can't believe I'm actually agreeing with you for once. Um, oh, right. Well, well, it, well, you know, it's a funny thing, but, but human beings, it, you know, can agree on stuff and disagree on stuff. I mean, it's just the way it is. <laughs> I think so. And what I think is, uh, I'm, I'm a black male. Um, I live in London. Yep. Um, I've been stop and search before. And I, I, I don't really, for the first time when I, when I was stop and search, uh, I kind of like feel a bit like uh, targeted, but eventually I started thinking about it. Uh, the officer that, that stopped me over, he was not rude, he was just uh, quite polite, explained the reason why uh, he wanted to search me, explained the reason why the area is a bit dangerous and uh, a lot of nice crime I run. And I understand it. I, I, I agree. And I say, no, that's no problem at all. Uh, that took about two minutes. We go on well, and I, I, on my way I go. And I think people that are disagreeing with a stop and search i mean uh, unless you get your family someone in your family gets stabbed um yeah. and uh, sometimes even get killed and nothing's been done and always when when things been done we always blame the police uh why police is not doing more and when the police trying to do a bit more uh, and they, they, they end the wrong again so it makes the police job quite very difficult for them i, I think we should as long as the police are actually doing it in the right way, um, not actually doing it in an aggressive way, whereby people will perceive them as racism, uh, I think it should be. So, so, so that, now that's interesting. That's interesting, Richard. So, actually, it's about how the police approach people, how they deal with people, yeah? Uh, exactly. Interesting. Exactly. No, and, and you had no objection to me. What age are you, Richard? I'm, 20, I'm 28. You're 28. Okay. And how long ago were you stopped and searched? Uh, about two years ago. Okay. About and, two and years ago. No, well, that's it. Listen, I'm pleased to hear you say that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Richard there from Rise Lip, young black man, living in London, been stopped and, been stopped and searched, but said the Metropolitan Police did it the right way, and that clearly makes a difference. I've got time for one more caller on this subject this evening. I'm going to Ealing to speak to another new caller called Samantha. Good evening. Hi. Um, can you hear me okay? I certainly can. Okay, um, I'll be as quick as I can, and this is not an easy call for me. Okay. Um, I, I don't work for the police, but I have some, some sort of insight into police procedures because um, two years ago um, I was the victim of an attempt it, within a, a, an attempted murder charge. Oh, um, I, um, I had to sit through a, a Crown Court procedure listening to the judge tell a panel um, but of course they would expect my DNA to be on the main weapon used in the attack. And I would say there were, there were several weapons used in the attack on me. Um, the main weapon was a large kitchen knife and I had to listen to the judge tell the panel that, um, of course you'd expect my DNA to be on it because not just was my blood there, but it had come from my kitchen. Well, actually it hadn't come from my kitchen. Um, so that caused a bit of a hoo-ha. But um, the main thing was that afterwards we had to go through a separate procedure to take a new statement from me. There were two things here. 
during the investigation, I was never, ever, ever asked. I wasn't even shown a photo of the main weapon that was used in the attack. Um, after, um, when they realised this, um, I gave them a bit of a heads up as to, whether I, as to where I thought the knife had come from. Mm-hmm. Um, they went to that house and only spoke to the male member of that house. They never searched the drawers, which they're supposed to do, to see if it matches any of the drawers. Um, so they only spoke to the male member who didn't do the cooking. They refused to go back to speak to the female member. And the detective um, that I was talking to at the time was very, very young. But he literally said to me, what difference does it make? It doesn't change the fact that you were stabbed several times. No. So in the end, was anybody sentenced, Samantha? To placate me, he said, but there is more we can do. Um, we've, we're speaking to the knife manufacturers at the moment. Half an hour later, he rang back to say, the knife manufacturer had said, we sell this knife in 5,000 outlets. We can't possibly narrow it of down course. to where so, it was. S- Samantha, I, I, I want to hear more. I'm com- almost completely out of time. Did anybody get a sentence for this attempted murder on you? Say that again, sorry. Did, was anybody sentenced as a result of this? Um, it's a very complicated case. Right. It has been closed. I, okay. I'm, I'm not able to say too much about it. No, OK. It. Samantha, I'm going to have to leave you there. I needed longer for that one. But overall, it's a big issue. It's not going away. I believe we need to get tough. I'll be back tomorrow at 6. At 10 tonight.